are here at the Marais, which is short for Marine Experimental Ecology. The Marais is the tropical marine research facility here at ZMT. In the Marais, we are able to cultivate and grow a lot of different marine species in our aquaria tanks. In our current research projects, we work with tropical seagrasses, mangroves and crabs, corals and reef fish, sea cucumbers, macroalgae and jellyfish. The Marais offers a very flexible infrastructure that enables scientists to conduct experiments under highly controlled conditions. As important as field studies on site are, they do not answer all the questions that we have. Because we have confounding factors, confounding environmental conditions that we cannot control for. Having the infrastructure of Marie is extremely important for ZMT because there we can control environmental factors and we can change only those factors that we are interested in and then study in detail what drives ecosystem processes and interactions of species. Scientists have the choice to work either with artificial or natural seawater. For example, we have 24 experimental tanks and each one holds 250 liters of water. In these aquaria tanks, we can perform experiments with different treatments and replicates. We can control and change temperature, salinity and nutrient concentrations, but we can also simulate past, present and future ocean acidification and pollution scenarios to see how species react to these changes. I'm working with green macroalgae, which are called sea grapes. They are also known as green caviar because of their special texture. Sea grapes are not only very nutritious, but they are also suitable for the direct human consumption. Naturally, they grow in the Indo-Pacific, where they are also cultured in aquaculture facilities. Here in Marais, I'm culturing sea grapes in a recirculation system, together with milkfish and sea cucumbers. My overall goal is to find the optimal parameters for sea grape culture and to increase the nutritional value for human consumption. In my PhD project, I investigate new and low toxicity anti-fouling coatings. Biofouling itself is a natural process in which organic molecules and organisms settle onto substrates and surfaces underwater. So the anti-fouling coatings on the market have proven to show many toxic effects in marine animals, not only in the water column, but also in sediments. And so there is a high demand in the market to look for new environmentally friendly anti-fouling coatings. The mangrove ecology group studies in detail growth of little mangrove seedlings. This we do in the greenhouse or in the facilities of the marae. We are also interested in feeding ecology of crabs and snails and how they affect the sediment, the characteristics of the sediment, grain size, organic matter content. And for all this we need the facilities of the marae with the constant conditions where we can manipulate settings and study these species and their biology in detail. We use very modern LED lamps to provide optimal growing and keeping conditions. And we have a monitoring system which continuously measures parameters such as temperature, salinity, oxygen and pH. I would like to show you a very special jellyfish. It's the mangrove jellyfish or upside down jellyfish. And the special thing about this jellyfish is that it's laying with the head on the ground and sticking their tentacles into the light. And this is because this jellyfish has endosymbionts. It's uh, microalgae and they are doing photosynthesis. So this jellyfish can convert energy from photosynthesis into a protein-rich biomass. I'm trying to figure out which light is good for the jellyfish, so which light color and also which light intensity is good for the symbionts and with that for the growth of the jellyfish. And I'm also trying to figure out which temperature is good for this uh, species and also the salinity. So all the parameters that are here that we can manage in the aquaria, I try to manipulate to figure out optimal growth. And the other part, of course, is also what is actually in this jellyfish. We know that there is protein in it, but how good is the protein? How is the nutritional properties of this jellyfish for human consumption? Two of the biggest threats that are impacting coral reefs right now are global climate change, which is uh, the fact that oceans are warming worldwide, and also ocean acidification, which is the process in which the oceans are acidifying through increased anthropogenic CO2. And so the project that I'm working on here is trying to understand um, this very unique subset of coral reef organisms called large benthic foraminifera, and their nickname um, are forams. 
And so forams are single-celled organisms that occur on beaches worldwide and they compose in some areas up to 95% of the beach sediments. And so for the experiments here in the Marie, I'll use the state-of-the-art technology that's housed here at the Marie to manipulate the seawater conditions in which I can incubate these forams in. And from these experiments, I can better understand how climate change will impact beach sediment production. In all their work, our researchers are supported by myself as the head of the unit and two very experienced technicians. In the long-term future, we hope to gain more space for experimental setups to increase the number of tanks and to further develop our technological expertise in order to help our scientists answering an even larger scope of scientific questions and challenges.